Dot Rotten, Seth Ellis, right? Nikolai Selvez and Lewis Snellman proceeded to then phone the police and then tell the police that I was threatening them, I threatened to kill them, I threatened to stab them, um, I punched one in the face <coughs> um, and they needed to evict me from the building. So when the police turned up, I said they owed me £100,000. They said, no, we don't. We paid you 30. We only owe you 70. So the police officer said, well, this is a civil matter. You guys need to deal with it yourself. And considering you owe him 70,000 pounds, you need to give him the keys to the building. Right, so what I'd like to make the world know or what I'd like to just sort of, I don't know what, how, how to put it, it's just how to deal with life, right? So we've given up this life of crime. We thought it was going to be easy. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I never thought it'd be as complicated or confusing or as traumatic as it has been. So going into 2022, what I would like to do is make everybody aware of all the dramas, all the headaches, all the personal business and legal stuff that I've been going through for the last year and a half. Like, and I say this because of what I've achieved in the last year and a half through all the adversity, all the challenges, all the knockbacks, all the kick up the Niags and all the letdowns, you know, all the betrayal. It's all happened, man. I haven't exposed it on my platform because I didn't want to, I'm not a moaning type. I don't moan about shit, I just get on and do it. So what I've done, I've dealt with the situation, I've moved on, and now I'm gonna basically release the issue, the problem, the drama, let you know what's been happening, and basically introduce you to a, a new 2022. So rewind, 2019, right? So 2019 was the first start of my problems. So Lex and Lewis, Lewis Snellman, um, and Nikolai Salvez. Nikolai Salvez from West London, Elin, and Lewis Snellman from Milton Keynes. Now, I got introduced to these two guys to open up a, re a recording studio on a record label. I got introduced to them by my cousin who was linked up in the music industry. These guys sold me a dream like you couldn't imagine. They told me they was into um, re-offending, um, Reducing reoffending, rehabilitation, training, helping the youngsters, no criminal activities, all that sort of stuff. They promised that there was squeaky clean hands. So I started doing business with them. Just invested a hundred thousand pounds in cold cash, fifty thousand pounds on one date, fifty thousand pounds on another date in cold blood. Boom, there you go. Now what that fifty thousand pounds was for? Well, that hundred thousand pounds was for was to pay the rent for a year on the building and look after a couple of people's wage structures, right? That was the 100,000 pound, plus another 50,000 pound to do something else in and about the building, and then based on the network. So I've done what I've done, I brought what I had to the table, I give the boys my money, um, they never paid no rent at all, right? Facts, I want to show you the, <coughs> the paperwork, they paid no rent whatsoever for the two years we were there. Um, I never paid no one their wages that was working there. I had to pay people out of my pocket, you know, um, and then we actually completed, and then basically the gaff was full of drug dealers every week, every day. So I've told everybody that come to the building that they can't come to the building to sell drugs or to do stupid shit. Um, every day the building's stinking of weed. Do you know what I mean? So the person next door in the in the dance academy, in the dance academy complained to the landlord. The landlord served me with a notice that said if we continue with the antisocial behaviour, smoking weed, they're going to evict us from the building. So I told everybody they can't smoke puff in the building no more, not come to the building with puff. We're here to help the youngsters. We're here to generate um, exits, revenue streams and um, sustainability for the younger generations. And there's no more puffing in the building. With that, they said I was a bully. Um, they said that I'm intimidating staff members, which was a lie. Um, I don't know any of the staff members there. And if any are there, anyone from Milton Keynes that has a complaint officially about Marvin Herbert, please send it to my inbox. 
herbert.marvin or YouTube or any comments you want, just please expose what type of person I was when I was working in Milton Keynes and New Money. Okay, let the world know what I was like, please. Um, yeah, so one day I turned up at the building and Dot Rotten is emptying my building. I was like, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? He's like, what? You taking my gear? I said, no, no, it ain't your gear. I've invested <laughs> over hundred thousand pounds in this building, bro. You ain't taking no account of this building. He's there. So anyway. Right. I need my bag, bro. Okay, well, ring well, let. You get you let him get his bag, so I need to get my bag. My bag has my personal goods that I paid my money for. I'm not really trying to ask for my stuff because my stuff is my stuff. I need my stuff in it. Like all my stuff is behind you, so I need my stuff. I'm not really trying to ask. What? Well, listen, listen, listen. I'm, I'm not, listen to me. I'm not really trying to ask for my stuff. I'm saying I need my stuff. You're stopping me from getting it, and you did not put me here or put me in this building or anything. I'm saying I need my stuff. You're stopping me from getting it. Well, your look. issue, I said to you upstairs. You, I said to you upstairs. Your issue with Lex is your issue with Lex. You agreed, and now you're telling me, bro, I can't take my stuff. Face that don't give a fuck. All right. Well, excuse right. me. I need to get my stuff. You now. have to wait. No, I don't have to wait to do. get my stuff. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. You no, do. I don't. No, do. I don't. No, I don't. You do. No, I don't. Do. No, I don't. God yes, knows I don't. Do. So can I have my bag? Lewis can have his bag. Can I have my bag? Lewis can have. No, I can't. No, I can't because I shouldn't have to wait for nothing. Can I have my bag? My shit is in there. You're telling me I can't take it. Come in then. What? You're telling me I can't take my stuff? Yeah, come in then. Come in. Yeah, I will come in. Give me a minute. Go on then. Go on then. Keep the door unlocked. Go on. Give me a minute. Come in then. What's happening now then? Police. You're waiting for the police, yeah? Okay. Okay. No, you can get in the building once the marshal gear's back. It's there in the park. We'll bring it over then. No, get, get your, you got to get it. You got to get it. Hey, no, you took it out of the building. So what? You got to get it. Furthermore, let me go and see AV then. What are you talking about? Let me go and see AV. Do you you know just what? punch him in his face. What are you yeah, about? You're supposed to be. I'm going to get it. 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 I'm going to <laughs> this guy's not letting me in the, he's still not letting me in the building to collect my stuff. He's standing outside and with the two. I'm still I'm I'm still here, I'm trying to collect my stuff. That's all that's going on. I'm just gonna get my stuff and keep it moving. That's it. Bruv! You've been told you can bro, take whatever. the gear. Shut up, bro. Shut you can up, take the gear once the Marshall's back shut in the building. Up. Shut up! <laughs> give your words to someone who cares! Okay. Yes, give them to someone who cares. So shut do, up, do we know what time shut the police up, are coming? coming? Shut up! Okay. Shut up! They're coming now. Shut up, bro. Shut up, bro. Just shut up. Please, just shut up, Blair. Shut up. Shut up, bro. You are. When I get you, when I get you. Oh, so the true colours come out eventually. Look at you. Fuck yourself, man. Look at you. Fuck yourself. But I'm a bully. That's your master. Can never be my master. Look at you. I've got every single recording of me and you and him. And all you do is fan us. Okay. That's all you do. No, over my money. No, all right. What money? Stop. What money? The hundred grand I'll give you. Thirty thousand. Yeah, I'll give you a hundred thousand. You made an agreement that you agreed on that we give you seventy back. All right. So where's the rest of it? All right. Dot rotten. Seth Ellis, right? Nikolai Selvez and Lewis Snellman proceeded to then phone the police and then tell the police that I was threatening them, I threatened to kill them, I threatened to stab them, um, I punched one in the face <coughs> um, and they needed to evict me from the building. So when the police turned up, and they did turn up, um, it made, it became, they became aware because of Lewis and Lex arguing about, I said they owed me a hundred thousand pounds. They said, no, we don't. We paid you 30. We only owe you 70. So the police officer said, well, this is a civil matter. You guys need to deal with it yourself. And considering you owe him 70,000 pounds, you need to give him the keys to the building. So they had to give me the keys to the building. And in the video we displayed, you'll see, man's was deflated. Not deflated because of losing the building, it was getting, they got deflated because they lost the battle. They lost their little coup. They thought they'd get Marvin kicked out of the building. They thought they'd keep the 100,000 pounds. They thought they'd run off into the sunset, living in a lovely house in Gambia. That's what they thought. Now, he's got the house in Gambia, and he's run off into the sunset. Is he living comfortable? I don't know. I really don't care. You're asking, like, he's still in a, he's You're a, very reasonable. And I feel like you've got to sort this I'm out. You know what? Is, I'm, I'm deflated. You're deflated. I'm deflated. So, why don't we get everything done? It's all right. 
Look, I'm between you and him, okay? Yeah, I have to go upstairs. You need to go upstairs. Yeah, what for? I've got, What's upstairs? I've got, I've, got, I've got equipment upstairs. What equipment? Everything's downstairs. I, I don't know no, because there's, I there's haven't one seen since you blocked me. There's one box. Thing. But what I do know, karma is going to bring him exactly what he deserves. I come on, bro. I didn't come in for none of this. I didn't come in for none of this. Big man, I didn't come in for this. Big man. Okay, so I have no ill feeling about these guys as long as the platform knows and the universe knows that I've battled through that to be where I am today. <coughs> now, when they had me over for the £100,000, I lost my company. I lost all my revenue stream. I lost my money, so I was broke, right? So then I borrowed a bit of money to get back on my feet. A friend of mine, legal friend, I think it was about £5,000, just to get me over a couple of months of paying rent and travelling. And then I got introduced to Sam Bandari. Now, Sam Bandari was someone who went away for fraud. Um, but obviously, I've turned my life around. And a couple of people that I know turned their life around. So we absolutely believed that this guy turned his life around and we invested in this guy. Now, this guy was connected to Bollywood, connected to America, connected to Europe, connected everywhere. He had the wickedest network ever. This guy sold me the dream like you couldn't imagine. The sickest businessman on the planet. And I believed him. So I invested in this guy. Now, what we've done, we got some loans, some bounce back loans, um, to invest in our companies when COVID hit. So the investments were supposed to be me to grow my company, um, invest into my company to grow my company. So I went from 167 followers to 63,000 followers, right? So everybody's seen my growth on this platform and you've seen where it's gone quiet. Now where it's gone quiet is because I've run out of money, I've been evicted, I've got no money, I've got no income apart from YouTube. Right, and that's because of things that these people have done to me. They pulled my pants down. Like uh, Sam Bundari was supposed to buy um, a hostel and three, two HMOs, one for forty-five rooms and one for thirty-eight rooms. And what we were supposed to do is use them to rehabilitate people, reduce reoffending, and use one as a hostel for people coming out of prison, help rehabilitate people, put them into the right roads, the right avenues, the right networks, so they can grow, develop sustainability for their life. And uh, we give him the money. All in total, he had £156,000. And he never paid, never got, never even brought any properties to the, to the table. But what he did do, what he did do, is pay a confiscation order. Because he had a confiscation order because he got nicked for a fraud offence, he went away. And I've only found this out after doing my due diligence, which is a bit sad on my part. But after the judge said he was a manipulative, grooming, sort of bad person, yeah, he cannot be trusted. He is not allowed to be a director, a shadow director, or give any financial advice or any business advice to anybody. I didn't know none of this, but I found out all this after. So illegally, this guy has hoodwinked me into getting him some money to pay his confiscation order. Now, I can't be a part of that, so obviously I'm about to get the man arrested. So I don't know how long the process is gonna take, but my applications have gone in, my evidence has been built, and I've passed it over. So now we're waiting to see what the police do with that, and we're going into 2022 with a whole new platform of exclusivity on the podcast front. So stay tuned, stay focused and stay positive. More importantly, stay busy and stay out of trouble.